So what are we getting today, Damon? We're getting horseshoe crabs. Why are we getting them today? Because it's horseshoe crab spawning season and it's a spring tide. Just when they spawn. Awesome. What are we getting to take with us? We're we getting to take with us. Uh, we are getting buckets. We are getting measuring tapes. We're getting measuring boards. We're getting tagging equipment. And our lucky <laughs> Not so lucky for her. But. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we'll see y'all out there. It's like the most beautiful night on Sapelo Island. So we're bringing the dog with us too. So maybe he'll find some horseshoe crabs. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we talked about this being a spring tide, and thought it might be a good opportunity to talk about what a spring tide is. Well, it, uh, a spring tide has nothing to do with the season. It is uh, on uh, every month. You have this phase where the high tides get higher and the low tides get lower, and uh, it's on every full moon and every new moon and right now we have a full moon um, so we have one of the highest spring tides of the season and one of the things that's washed up on this tide are loads and loads of cannonball jellies <laughs> All right. So we are stalking the mating horseshoe crab. Do you see them? Here we are. Okay, so you have a pair, male and female, they come up to the very top of the intertidal zone. And she'll lay the egg, and um, she just drags him across the eggs. The eggs are in the sand. Yeah, she does all the work. She, she does all the work. She does all the work. She pulls him around and um, pulls him over where she's laid the eggs, and he'll fertilize them as he just goes by. And then, so, so does she just do? She does this just once a year, right? She, um, the spawning season is in the spring, uh, but she will spawn multiple times in the season. So she'll, you know, per spawning event, she'll lay roughly four thousand eggs at a time. But during that whole spawning season, she may lay close to ninety thousand eggs. And so it will be the same male every time. No. No. So, oh, so no, she'll lose him. She'll lose him. Yeah. Okay. All right. So he's getting a ride right now, and uh, he he hangs on with he has these he has sort of special gripper claws that he uses to hold on to her, and uh, and get dragged. So I think we better leave them some private time. See if we can find some others. Well, it looks like love is in the air, but it's getting. It's getting pretty dark, so we're gonna we're gonna finish our walk and head home and see if we can find. Well, we know where the crabs are, um, and so tomorrow we're gonna come with some tags and some sampling gear and actually do some science. And are we gonna bring the dog? No. He's yeah. He's not conducive. <laughs> All right. So we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So there's that point of, of shells out there and there's a crab pair right off of that. 
And there's one in that little cove there, but there's a creek between here and there, and it's deep and we can't get to it. You can see all the birds up there waiting for them to come ashore so they can eat the eggs. So, no luck getting those horseshoe crabs. <clears throat> it was just too deep, and uh, we're not really dressed quite properly to go in the water today. Well, and, and we've had a bit of a cold snap here in May. This uh, is the coldest weather we've had in months. So, those birds were out there looking for those eggs, and those eggs are really full of, of energy, right? Yeah. The, um, horseshoe crabs, ecologically, are really important. Um, their eggs are a really important food source for a lot of shorebirds. In particular, a, a migrating shorebird called the red knot, um, which has one of the longest migrations of any bird. Um, it breeds in the Arctic, on the tundra, and migrates to the southern tip of South America. Um, so they are on their way north right now. They pass through the coast of Georgia and when they come here to the east coast of the US during their migration they stop over and they refuel and the fuel that they use is is the eggs of horseshoe crabs. <laughs> Yes, I am. <laughs> Is it too strong? You want to just wait? over. <laughs> That's how much Damon loves me. He's going to get those crabs. Oh, there's three. Are there three or two? So this is the female, and you can see the scars that are caused during spawning when the male latches on. The male latches on right here with the two uh, forward walking legs, and so the front of, of his uh, prosoma sort of abrades right across right there. And she's a lot bigger than the males, right? She's much bigger. So the other two over there are males. So that's like my hand on her. My hand on him. So why were there three, three crabs rather than two? Well, the... So there are two males here. This one is a larger male. The larger male was actually latched on to her, and uh, the other one was was just um, right next to them. And so they compete. The males will compete for access to the females, and the the larger male was the winner there. So what? Well, the other one was just trying to get in there. He was just trying to get in there, and you know it's possible as she deposits her eggs. Um, she excavates a little burrow, um, deposits her eggs, and then as she walks past, the male that's latched on behind her can fertilize those eggs. And it's possible that the second male can also fertilize some of those eggs as well.
Okay, we're going to uh, start tagging, and the first thing we're going to do is measure the horseshoe crab. And the way you measure a horseshoe crab is the width of the prosoma, or the forward part of the shell. And so if we can just get this <laughs> guy to, yeah, stay like that. Let's do it. How big is he? That is 22 centimeters. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> A little over 22 centimeters. 22 centimeters, okay. So, write that down. So that's just the straight line width. And then we're gonna also see if we can get a width right here. Okay, so here's uh, the other male. This one appears to be older than the first one. You can see how it moves the telson around. It's sort of like a universal joint. Um, and you see uh, the rear walking legs. These are called pusher legs. And they use that to uh, push themselves along the bottom. They're not, um, they're not claws that, that have any real strengths. Um, but you can also see this is what they do to try to right themselves. Whoops. And apparently this one really likes to be upside down. Um, like uh, lobsters and true crabs, they can only grow by molting and growing a new shell. And so when they molt, they split the prosoma, this, the cephalothorax, of the shell that's at the forward part of the body. It splits right along the leading edge, and they basically just crawl right out of it. And then he's got a lot of stuff on him. Yeah, so... This is all probably bryozoans, I think, and some slipper shells and things like that. But he'll... When he gets his new shell, that'll be ni a nice clean shell. You can kind of tell how long they've had their shells become a, by how much crap they have on them. Okay, so one of the things that we want to do today is tag some horseshoe crabs. And we have uh, these simple wax-coated paper tags that just have an identification number on them. And we're going to uh, place a tag right here on the shell. We just uh, drill a small hole through uh, the prosoma, uh, the very trailing edge of the prosoma, um, and we'll release it. And just a simple tag like this, we can get a lot of information from them. Uh, we can estimate the population size uh, by doing mark recapture techniques. Uh, we can also just follow individuals. If we tag a bunch of horseshoe crabs and some of them are smaller, we can look at growth rates. Uh, we can also use tags to estimate the longevity of the animals, how long they live for. So there, there's a lot of data that we can get um, by putting tags on animals and recapturing them later. And so, this, like I said, we're going to uh, take this uh, tag and we're going to drill a small hole right there and that tag is just going to fit right in the hole. It doesn't hurt. No, it, it doesn't hurt them. It's like trimming your fingernails? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, let's so do it. As long as we do it in that area. If we were to, you know, drill a hole somewhere else, that would cause damage. But there's, uh, back here on the trailing edge of the prosomas, not a problem. You gonna get an earring, little buddy? Do it on my side or your side? Yeah. yeah. Um, there you go. Go for it. We can see that. 
We want to make sure we have a good view of this. And you've done this before, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> didn't appear to affect him one little bit. Can you just sew us that, that hole before you put it in? Nice, so that's that little hole. And that just gets poked in there? And that just gets poked in there. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, he's like got an earring. That's it, right there. Cool. You're a good looking crab. All right, let's do the other ones. Before we put these guys away, I just um, wanted to point out that that males and females look very different and they're sexually dimorphic. Um, and the first thing is that the females are a lot larger. The, the females are a lot larger. They molt one or two more times than males before they, um, you know, they have a, a terminal molt so that they, they reach a maximum size. And in order to grow, they have to molt. Uh, females molt one or two more times than the males. Is that so they can produce eggs? And that's so they can be larger. And being large is important when you're a female because larger females can produce a lot more eggs than oh. smaller ones. That makes me feel good about my weight then. Okay, and, and then she also doesn't have the same... Yeah, so if you look at that very first walking leg there, um, it just has sort of a, a claw that is... Mm -hmm. Similar to all those on all the other walking legs. And if you compare that to that of the male, I flip him over and see that the first walking yeah. leg. So that is an adaptation that allows a male to grip the shell of the female during spawning so that he can latch right onto her. All right, we're back here at Marsh Landing and we're gonna release these guys right back where we found them. And they have a nice earring to wear, but they're no worse for wear. You can see how, wow. <laughs> There's very little visibility here. <laughs> there, buddy. There you go. Oh, and she's flipped herself right over already. <laughs> she's releasing herself. Watch out, this guy's oh, going hello. right at you. <laughs> yeah, she's released. That's it. So I think it was a, it was was a pretty a sick successful day. Yeah, what do you think? It was uh, very successful. Um, but, what do you think about the numbers? It was less than I was expecting, because in years past, like right here, we see like dozens of them on every high tide usually. Um, so that was surprising. Last night was really cool because we saw them, we saw them um, in the surf at night. So we saw quite a few last night actually, but then this morning we didn't see any. So that was just really, really surprising. Um, and so, you know, maybe it was really windy. It doesn't look like it now, but it was really windy early this morning. Um, so maybe that prevents them from coming up because this is a time when they're really vulnerable, right? They're coming out of the water and if they get flipped over in the surf, they can die pretty easily. So maybe they're reluctant to come up on big, big uh, surf like that. Um, or maybe the water temperature is not to their, to their liking. So, um, yeah, well, it's cool to come out here anyways and get a few of these done and, the thing is, you know, you think you're only doing a couple, but if you do a couple on every tide, uh, you know, a couple a day, and there's dozens of people up and down the coast doing it, it, it starts to add up. So um, it's a cool project. It is a cool project. Mm -hmm. So their their annual goal is to tag 20,000 crabs a year up and down the East Coast. Well, we better get to work so we, get, we have our work cut out for us. So 
she's headed back out to sea, does that mean she, you think she's laid her eggs? She may have laid her eggs or we've just disturbed her. You want that one too? Oh. <laughs> oh.